Hi all, thanks thanks for having me. And I'm really excited to be talking about how you can transform your data uh, from raw data into insights with Apache Hootie and DBT. So in data, transforming unstructured uh, and raw data into actionable insights is akin to the ancient alchemist's uh, pursuit of transforming base metals into gold. So in this talk, I'm gonna go over how you can refine and turn your data to gold that can be used for downstream applications with Apache Hoodie and DBT. Um, so I'm Nadine, um, I already had an intro, so we can go ahead and skip the slide. But if you want to uh, follow me on LinkedIn or learn more, you can um, visit linkedin.com slash in slash Nadine Farah, or you can also um, follow me on Twitter at nfarah86. Um, if you're enjoying today's talk, I would love to hear from you. You can tag and follow the Apache LinkedIn handle with a screenshot or two. Um, or you can also follow us on Twitter at Apache Hoodie. Um, and if you like this session, tweet about it and stuff. Uh, I'll PM you and we can see what we can do to get you some Apache Hoodie swag. So for the agenda today, I'm going to go over the medallion architecture and then I'm going to go over the overview of uh, the Hoodie platform. And then after, I'll go into um, details about Hoodie's incremental processing with the CDC feature. And then finally, I'll tie it in and in how, in how we can talk about using Hoodie and DPT to transform your data into insights. Um, so let's go over the medallion architecture. So um, in the comment section or in the little box, let me know if you've heard about the medallion architecture, um, Apache Hoodie. Um, and even if you haven't, uh, type it in the comment box as well. Um, I like to like kind of get a sense of um, what the audience uh, is familiar with. So this is a typical view of what many um, of what maybe most of us have seen surrounding the medallion architecture. And let's do like a little walkthrough uh, of what this looks like. So when data is ingested, it'll be unprocessed and stored in a data lake. And typically in the raw or bronze layer, you'll have data duplication chain logs, raw event data, and more. And data in the bronze or raw layer is typically unstructured. So from there, the data will graduate into the silver layer where you'll perform data deduplication, you'll validate the data, you might orchestrate and manage the data like data cleaning, file sizing, and then finally you'll write some join queries with all the different silver tables that you have and you'll create a fax table or a gold table that can be used by AI or ML applications, analytics, and more. But when you look at this like medallion architecture, it's pretty simple to do, right? Like it seems like you just move data down these um, these like basically these pipelines. But what does it take to actually implement something like this? So let's take a look. So when people approach the medallion architecture, um, they typically approach it with a diagram that I have shown here. Um, and I've talked to some people and this is exactly what something or around this might look like. So in the raw layer, you'll first ingest raw or unprocessed data into the data lake, and you'll create what we call like the raw or bronze layer. I'll use like the raw or bronze layer throughout the presentation interchangeably. Do a full table scan to grab all the data, including the new updates, and rewrite the entire stable table with augmented data. And in this process, you might use SQL, PySpark or something else, for example, like to deduplicate the data, manage the data, again, like cleaning or clustering. Augmenting the data with the examples I gave is a very manual process. You have to manage and orchestrate all the processes and ensure that there are no concurrency, right conflicts that can lead to data corruption, data loss, deadlocks, slow read operations, and more. So after you've done all that, uh, you'll do another full table scan and join the silver tables. The join will happen in a temp table you might create in Spark. And then from there, you'll output the results into a parquet file and create a goal layer or fact table. Um, and the query engine you use will have to do another full uh, table scan to execute the query and return the results. So uh, it can be used for analytics or you know, other applications and stuff. And you can see that there's a general theme here of scanning the full table, doing full rewrites, and this whole architecture is very manual. You have to manually file size your data to avoid the small file problem. You have to clean the old data and, and so much more. And so the technologies available encourage you to approach the medallion architecture this way. And that's because you lack a few key things. So let's take a look at what they are. In this diagram, each of the zones have the same services repeated. So I'll go over what each are and how they affect the medallion architecture. So let's talk about automated table services. So many technologies don't offer fully automated table services 
that can automatically help manage your data and maintain your table's health. So for example, in Spark, you might have to run manual compaction, merging smaller files to larger ones. So you can improve your query performance and also cleaning data to ensure you run faster analytics and you're compliant. However, if you needed to run these two services um, at some point together, you would have to implement your own optimistic concurrency control mechanism in Spark. And here, if two services try to modify a record, one would have to fail or be blocked until the other service has completed its task. Now, in terms of the inter incremental framework and indexes, um, the incremental architecture prides itself in incrementally updating data sets without having to reprocess the entire data over and over again. And a key capability that aids to achieve incremental processing is to handle data mutations at record level. And this helps to avoid reprocessing the non-changing data. And also, adding an indexing mechanism can further help to quickly process these record mutations because indexing helps locate records and data lakes faster and more efficiently. So not, by not having this, you constantly have to do full table scans and table rewrites. And at terabytes, petabytes, and exabyte scale, this inefficiency becomes unbearable. You have to throw a lot of compute to your application, and at some point, this is just like not maintainable and totally costly. So what's an alternative architecture um, that might be a little bit more efficient? So in this sample architecture with Apache Hudi, you can ingest data into the raw zone. From there, you can do incremental pool of just the new data and update the silver layer. Here, Hudi automatically manages all the data cleaning file sizing, and other table management services. And in this case, it's less operational than what you might have to do with Spark. Now, to build a Go table, you'll have to create a temp table, and then you can perform your join operation. But the changes are incrementally updated in the Go table, where you can use a query agent to do efficient lookups. So now that I'm, I'm sort of like introducing um, a new technology with Apache Hootie in this diagram, uh, let's get an overview of what it is, and what it provides, and how it uh, affects the medallion architecture. So previously, we looked at the bottlenecks um, of the medallion architecture. But what if we flipped it and you had these features and services enabled? So Apache Hoodie is a data lake house platform that provides database-like quality features and services to your data lake, like S3, for example. So with Hoodie, you can fully automate table services that continuously schedule and orchestrates clustering, compaction, cleaning, file sizing, indexing to always ensure that your tables are always, um, are always ready and healthy. In addition, you can replace old school batch pipelines with an incremental streaming of your data lake. So Hudi allows for quick updates and delete data with, fast, with a fast pluggable indexing. And this includes uh, streaming workloads with full support of out of order data, bursty traffic, and data deduplication. But since Hudi provides an indexing mechanism, you can take the data updates from an upstream database and apply role level changes to downstream application. And as a result, Hoodie's incremental framework allows for faster ingestion and lower processing times for analytical workloads. But Hoodie's features and services enable uh, faster performance where you can go from hours or days and updating downstream applications to literally just minutes. So let's get, let's take like a bird's eye view of what this platform looks like. So Apache Hoodie is much more than just a table format. It's an, a comprehensive platform designed for data ingestion and processing. And it's equipped with a range of features and services aimed at maximizing the efficiency of both writing and reading data. So at the very foundational level of this platform lies your data lake storage. This is where all your data resides uh, in prevalent formats like Parquet or Avro. But upon this, Hoodie provides a transactional database layer this is the layer uh, where you see the open formats, transaction, concurrency, SQL, that, those little boxes. Um, but this is exactly where Hoodie's true power shines because it offers multiple services, including table services, indexing, concurrency, control amongst other, others. And these services collectively offer significant enhancements to data and table management. So table services facilitates the handling of data at scale, indexes speed up data retrieval operations, and concurrency control ensures consistency of data across multiple operations. But after the data has been successfully ingested and managed these previous layers, Hoodie offers the ability to connect this process data with popular computation engines like Presto and Athena. But by facilitating these integrations, Hoodie allows for efficient and advanced querying of data. 
So now let's dive into some specifics of Hoodie by going over Hoodie's file layout and why it's important. So a Hoodie table consists of file sizes. Each slice contains a base file, which is usually in a dot parquet format, uh, produced at some certain commit or compaction instant time, along with a set of log files um, that contain inserts and updates to the base file since the base file was last produced. And uh, as you can see in the top half of the diagram, a group of file sizes is known as a file group. So when writes come in on the top half of the diagram, the records are written to the file slices. And each record has a key that is mapped to a particular file group. So let's talk about these advantages. So from the point of writing a, uh, to a hoodie table, if you have multiple table servers running in the background alongside with the ingestion pipeline, the services don't block each other because uh, hoodie offers multi-version concurrency control. But from the point of reading data, the file layout facilitates a query engine to be able to query a table at a particular point in time. And this becomes really crucial when we talk about incremental processing, which I'll get into uh, in a little bit later. Now, on the bottom half of the diagram, when a record gets written to a file group, Hoodie's timeline also records what commit action was done in a timeline. And the timeline structurally, if you create a, like a Hoodie project, it's located in the .hoodie folder and it's essentially an event log. There are different actions that can be recorded on the timeline, such as a commit or a clustering action or a rollback and so on. But a key thing to point out in the hoodie timeline is there are timestamps associated with every action along with some metadata about it. Now, following the timeline, there is a metadata table. The metadata table is different from a timeline in that it's an actually an internal merge on read table in the hoodie data table. And the metadata table is a central place for all files of metadata. So when a commit happens, the metadata table gets equally updated as well. And you can think, just think of like the metadata table as like a, a big index. So the other thing that's important to note is that Hoodie stores state. And the last, um, in, the last uh, in the last slide, we talked about the timeline and metadata table. But if a record has an update, Hoodie checks the records key to see if the record exists in the file group, okay? So if it does, it updates that particular file size depending on where the record is located. And equally, the timeline um, and metadata tool will also be updated as well. And since Hoodie maintains a timeline of when an action occurs on the Hoodie table, you can essentially find out what changes occurred in that time range. If we go back in the timeline, anything, basically things that happen to the table get recorded to the timeline along with the timestamp uh, of, uh, of when that occurred. So from there, you can update downstream applications or tables with just the data using Hoodie's incremental framework with the CDC feature. And if you look on the, uh, in, in the slide, there's an incremental query and there's a T minus one and T. You can essentially write an incremental query with a range of time that you're interested in and just grab the, the newly changed data. So this is, how, this, is, this is how you avoid reprocessing or requering like a whole table. But before we double click into the incremental framework uh, with the CDC feature, let's quickly cover how Hoodie is being used with some major players. So Hoodie is proven at massive scale. Uh, Uber, Walmart, GE all use Hoodie for their mission critical application. In particular at ByteDance, Hoodie is being used at an exabyte scale for a single table. And even at this level, Hoodie brings down um, analytics from late latency uh, minute from days to minutes. And one of the ways that Hoodie brings down analytics from days to minutes is through its incremental processing framework. Um, so recently in the 0.14.0 release of Hoodie, we introduced a new CDC feature uh, with, oh, sorry, the 0.13.0 uh, release, we introduced a CDC feature with the incremental processing framework. So the next section will cover what this feature is um, and how it works. So let's go over Hoodie's incremental processing framework. So to recap, in, uh, within the medallion architecture, we presented a straightforward and more simplistic approach to constructing your bronze, silver, and gold tables. So a standout feature that spurs you from conducting full table scans in, in Hoodie is Hoodie's incremental uh, framework. So using this framework, only the changes are streamed to update downstream tables. So to realize the end-to-end -end incremental processing, Hoodie provides a Hoodie streamer to officially pull changes from the source support mutable data and record level updates, and conveniently write the data to downstream sinks all the way from the source to bronze, silver, and gold layers. And you can see that over here. So here's an example of how you can use Hootie Streamer to construct an incremental processing end-to-end. -end. 
A common use case is streaming the change logs from a database like Postgres through Debezium and Kafka. Each message has the before and after images reflected the, reflecting the changes. Um, the schema is registered to the schema registry. And in the first step, the hoodie streamer gets the new data from the last checkpoint and bulk inserts them to the bronze table. This bronze table contains the exact raw events from the Kafka source for further processing. Next, um, another Hootie streamer is, conduct, is constructed to do any kind of data cleaning and augmentation. For example, users can transform their data by flattening fields, selecting relevant fields with projection, and any other custom transformations. But once that's done, the data is upserted to the silver table, which is a clean data set. Once the changes are landed in the silver table, uh, the subsequent hoodie streamer job conducts more complex operations with business logic using the SQL provided by the user, like joining the dimension tables and other data from multiple tables. After the complex business logic is applied on the changes, the records are upsorted uh, to the gold summary table for data analytics. But one key functionality here is supporting mutable data in the incremental processing. So let's take a deeper look at how hoodie takes the changes handles the mutation and streams the changes to downstream um, applications. When we look at it under the hood, there are quite a few steps between taking the incremental changes from source and streaming them from Hoodie to the downstream. To enable mutable data at record level, Hoodie provides built-in support on locating the records and the record payloads and merging so that the user can customize their insert, updates, and delete logic. As I mentioned earlier, Hoodie needs to make sure there's consistency between the index data so the metadata can be used for reading and writing the table. So Hoodie provides automatic metadata management on the Hoodie timeline and metadata table. And we talked about this when we talked about uh, Hoodie maintaining state. So besides managing the data and metadata, Hoodie automatically optimizes the data layout on storage with small file handling and table services like compaction and clustering so that query engines can read well-sized files and improve the query performance. And alongside the incremental processing, there could be concurrent writers. For example, you have a backfill job to rewrite old data or a job to delete selective data. Hoodie provides optimistic concurrency control and multi-version concurrency control for different use cases to efficiently handle multiple writes. Now you, may, uh, uh, now you may wonder how Hoodie handles record level mutation, which is necessary in the incremental processing. Hoodie uh, provides the payload and merge API for inserts, updates, and deletes so that the user can customize what they need. So let's take a look at uh, an example with this slide. Let's say you have a, a table to store bank accounts. Each entry has a UUID, the name of the account, the last updated timestamp and balance, and just like other databases, Hoodie requires the primary key field to be specified by the user to identify the unique record. The primary key field and the example is the UUID. So for each incoming data batch, Hoodie looks at the primary key, the UUID, to identify whether an input record is an insert updates or deletes. And incoming batch one, we have one insert and one update. Now, during the upsert operation, the table is updated by the inserting the row with the UUID three for me and updating the existing record for Ethan's account. For the next incoming batch, the first record is marked as a delete and the hoodie deletes this entry. The second record is, uh, is another update for the XYZ account. Now, if you look at the results after the upsert operation, the balance for Ethan's account is not changed. This is because we want to honor the balance of the latest timestamp. In this case, Hoodie looks at the ordering field and makes sure to ignore late arriving data from the application perspective. So my account won't get $20 from nowhere. Hoodie has like built-in support for event time ordering, which is prevailing in streaming and incremental processing. Now, once a data mutation is done, Hoodie attaches um, some metadata such as the commit time, file name, and each to each record and also updates the metadata and Hoodie timeline. These essentially serve as the state for streaming changes from Hoodie table. While the record level mutation, uh, while for the record level mutation, the primary key is required. And for some use cases like event log injection, uh, which inserts your data, Hoodie supports automatic primary key generation so the user doesn't have to actually specify the primary key. And this is a new feature um, in the upcoming zero that, that we have now in the 0.14.0 release for better user experience. Um, and if you go into the Apache Hoodie LinkedIn, um, we're also gonna do a specific LinkedIn live session on um, auto-generated primary key as well. 
So aside from the exist, existing incremental pools, Hoodie provides a new CDC mode for incremental processing. And this provides Debezium-like change logs um, with the before and after images. And here is a sample code to read uh, the incremental data in the CDC format. Now for inserts, the before image is null and the after image is the new value. For updates, the before and after images show the values for before and after the, the image. And you can see that you have on, on the far right column, you have operation type. So in the U, you can see the before and after. Now um, for deletes, the before image is the record um, that you want to delete. But if you look at the after image, um, it's actually null. So through the CDC features, users can use further transformation or processing based on the before and after values. So now that we talked uh, about the incremental framework and, and with a CDC feature, now we can talk about how you can integrate Hoodie with DBT to efficiently build refined data models. So to recap, incremental processing typically begins with extracting data from an upstream data source like Kafka and loading the raw data into a lake house storage. And we went through this example when we talked about the Mendelian architecture. And this was like, you know, the, the first the first couple slides that we did. So from the raw data or bronze stage onwards, there will be many transformation jobs orchestrated in, in different cadences that move data across tables and lake house platforms. Um, so when these numbers uh, of these jobs grow, it will be super critical for an organization to be able to conveniently deploy and operate them. So DBT stands for the Data Build Tool, and it's designed to handle transformation. And in the ELT architecture, it's the T or transformation part. And it standardizes the way to structure and manage SQLs and config files and does the heavy lifting for connecting and building the data pipelines. So there are links in this throughout these slides. You can click on the links to learn more after the presentation um, and get some code samples um, if you're interested in learning more. So here is a typical DBT pro what a DBT project looks like. And the DBT, uh, the DBT underscore project.yaml defines a context for the whole project. And it usually involves a bunch of data pipelines that depend on or are closely related to each other. The structure contains project version information, project folder path, common settings, and, and more. But models in DBT represent the transformations um, and the involved group of data sets or tables of the Lake House platform. The, model, the models folder contains the definition of all the data sets involved by the, by the transformation pipelines and how the transformation logic looks like between the data sets. The target folder is generated upon the project build and it contains the compiled and runtime SQLs that GBT generated based on the user defined models. And whenever a user chooses to update some models or settings, content in the, that content folder um, will be updated by the build or uh, run command. So we'll walk through an example use case to illustrate DBT usage with Hoodie's incremental processing feature uh, with the CDC feature. So the sample data set is very simple. The upstream data contains user profile updates, specifically it contains the updated city information and timestamp for a particular user. The first tra transformation processes the raw updates um, and upserts it into a Hoodie table to give the latest state or city, inf uh, city information for all the users. The second transformation spools the change user profiles corresponding change information to allow downstream jobs to react. From there, there could be some popular live events in the city X. So, and if the users who recently changed their profiles and updated their city fields from other cities to X, the system can grab all these users and spend recommendation emails and send the recommendation emails to help the event promotion. Now the SQL file, which is in the raw underscore update SQL, is the first SQL defined in, in this project. And it's mocking the data, basically mocking the data ingestion portion. But in a full-fledged setup, the table would have been populated with upstream data from sources like Kafka. And in the sample project, the source data is just hard-coded for illustrative purposes. Now when we execute the transformation, we'll group chat a table called raw underscore updates that will contain three records, these are one and one, one or two and one or three who have cities set A, B, and C respectively. And you can see that on the far right column. Now to simulate uh, new updates, we can run manually run an insert command as shown here, and we can update their cities to D, E, F, and you also see that in here as well. And again, um, you can find uh, the code once the slides are available. The second transformation process, the raw updates incrementally and creates a profile table for all users. So the profile table is a hoodie table that contains the latest city information. So to highlight some important settings, since we want to analyze what records were updated in subsequent transformation, we should enable a CDC feature in hoodie 
by enabling the config hoodie.table.cdc.enabled. And you can see that bolded in the far left diagram uh, as one of the last configs. Um, and this will make sure the writers, the writers will to log the record changes along with the upstarts. Now the is incremental macro near the bottom part indicates that only the newer data than the latest records in the profile table will be processed. And this is one example way to realize incremental nature for the job. So also note that the incremental strategy is set to merge, meaning that the merge into SQL statement will be generated to fulfill the upsert semantics in hoodie. And the merge underscore update underscore column indicates the table field to be updated through the merge. The last transformation is about pulling CDC records from the previous hoodie table profile into a new table called profile underscore changes. So to highlight some key parts, the hoodie underscore, uh, un uh, underscore table underscore changes um, function is a table valued uh, function that's been newly added since hoodie 0.14.0, and it's designed specifically for doing incremental queries with SQL for hoodie tables. So in this example, the CDC mode and the begin time of one day ago are passed to the function, instructing the query to pull all the record changes, including before and after images during the last 24 hours. And when we talked about a couple slides, uh, when we talked about hoodie maintaining state, there was an incremental query where we indicated the time, uh, T minus one and T. This is This is exactly what's going on here. The is under, underscore incremental function macro again limits records to pull to only the new and unprocessed ones. So note that the results from a CDC incremental query contains JSON formatted columns named before and after, depending on you know, how you want to configure your CDC logging level. So these co columns contains a complete image of the records before and after the change. And we can extract the relevant records field to suit our needs. So in this example, uh, the system business requirement is to promote events in the target city. And the promotion can be time sensitive and only apply to whom recently moved to the city. So doing hoodie CDC incremental queries will make sure to only process the relevant records instead of scanning the whole user profile table and then filter down to what is required. And this could potentially save on great costs of uh, an amount of data IO and cloud bill costs as well. So DBT also supports generating documentation UI for pages for easily browsing the project's uh, data sets. And when you have hundreds or thousands of data sets and transformation, um, it's a really cool feature to have and you can efficiently navigate through you know, what data sets or transformations you might need. So quick recap on DBT and the hoodie example. DBT naturally supports building incremental pipelines and merge semantics. Um, hoodie CDC feature produces before and after images of chain record records, which allow rich data transformation and capabilities um, that can help support your broader business needs. And with the incremental processing and DBT, we can count down the processing cost by limiting the amount of IO and only process the relevant data. And throughout this whole presentation, we talk about avoiding the need to do a full table scan to process to just pro and just process the change and updated data. So let's take a quick look on Hoodie's roadmap. We just released Hoodie uh, uh, dash 1.0.0. beta. Um, I'm just going to highlight maybe one feature since I think we're coming close to time. So one of the cool thing that we just launched is the non-blocking concurrency control for high streaming writes. It allows multiple writers to operate on the table with non-blocking conflict resolution. Um, and this is how you reduce wait times and avoid bottlenecks. It's ideal for high streaming writes because transactions can proceed independently and concurrently leading to increased throughput and overall system responsiveness. If you use Fling, Spark Streaming, and, and much more, this is a, a cool thing to try. Um, there's RFC 69 that's linked uh, with more description about 1.x. And if you visit um, the hoodie page, uh, you can um, look at the release notes as well. Um, here's how you can find more about Hoodie. You can uh, look at our docs at hoodie.apache.org. You can also find the release notes there. We have the community. Feel free to, scra uh, to scan the QR code to join the Slack community. You can also follow uh, asynchronously uh, with me up there if you have more questions about the presentation. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn.